Thank you for 200,000 subscribers. I think I broke both of my legs, but that is a wild number. Like seriously, we hit 100k nine months ago and now we're double that? Now to celebrate, I could have made a video saying thank you and be like, woohoo, and then roll the outro, but that was gonna be boring. So I instead decided to do something I've never done before. Today, I'm going to make my very first homebrew app. Oh, and I have zero coding knowledge, by the way. Now, I may be a homebrew YouTuber, but I usually just use the cool apps. This time, I want to actually understand what goes into creating them. Will I be able to successfully create one? Well, there's only one way to find out. So let's get start. Wait, if I say that, there's no turning back. Let me think about this. Okay, let's get started. First things first, I need to decide which console I'm making this app for. I have a modded Wii U, modded Nintendo Switch, and a modded 3D... W wait a second, is that dust on my 3DS? All right, 3DS it is. I haven't made a 3DS video in ages anyway. Now that I picked the console, I had to figure out what I actually wanted this app to do. And I think I have the perfect idea. You see, in some of my YouTube shorts and thumbnails, I'll show gameplay or videos on my 3DS or Switch screen. But my camera setup? Well, it's not exactly Hollywood quality, so it ends up looking like this. So to fix that, I usually record the footage separately, mask out the screen in editing, and if there's any movement, I have to motion track the whole thing, which is super annoying. But what if, hear me out, I could make my 3DS screen a solid color like green or blue? Whoa, hold up, stay with me now. Wait, who put that on in the background? Then I could easily key out the screen and overlay whatever video I want, perfectly tracked. So here's my app proposal. A simple homebrew program that lets me change the 3DS screen to any color I want. Look, please don't roast me in the comments, all right? I know it's nothing crazy like a full 3DS game or something, but you know what? If this video gets 20,000 likes, I'll do that next time. Now that I had the app idea, it was time to figure out how to make it. So I did what any normal person would do and searched for a tutorial on YouTube. And I was hyped because I found a full 3DS homebrew development tutorial series. But then I noticed it was uploaded in 2016 and the playlist only had two videos. Great. So the only 3DS homebrew guide on YouTube is older than the Nintendo Switch. This was gonna be way harder than I thought. But hey, a video's a video, so I watched it anyway. And honestly, it was very helpful. In the video, Kapula or Kapula, look, I don't know how to say his name, shared all the tools that I need to get started. Apparently, most Nintendo homebrew development uses something called DevKit Pro, which is, and I quote, an organization dedicated to providing useful tools and libraries targeting a variety of primarily Nintendo game consoles. So it's basically the instruction manual for homebrew development. So I headed over to their GitHub and installed it. The first thing the tutorial video showed me was how to load a homebrew app that displays Hello World on my 3DS screen. So I opened the newly created DevKit Pro folder on my computer and it was full of files. These might be useful later on. And the video told me to drag the Hello World folder to my desktop. Inside it were three things, a source folder, a build folder, and a make file. The 3DS homebrew launcher uses .3dsx files to run apps and the make file handles converting my code into one. To use the make file, I opened msys2, which magically appeared on my computer after installing DevKit Pro, changed my directory to the hello world folder, and typed make. And boom! This generated a 3DSX, SMDH, and ELF file. I don't know what an ELF file is, maybe it's for Christmas apps or something, but the tutorial didn't mention them, so I just ignored it. Now technically, I could have dragged the 3DSX and SMDH files to my 3DS to test the program, but I wanted to make a small change. I took a wild guess that the source code was in the source folder. Yes, I know, I'm a genius. And guess what? I was right! So I opened the source code in Visual Studio, which is basically the cool kid version of Notepad++, if you know what that is. And then I was staring at a whole lot of something while understanding a whole lot of nothing. It would probably be easier to read this if I had some prior C knowledge, but I did find the line that prints to the 3DS screen, I think. So I changed the message, saved it, and typed make to generate a new 3DS X file. Now it was time to see if my program, yes, my program, I changed one line, so it's basically mine now, would work on my 3DS. So now on my 3DS, if I open the homebrew launcher, I should see the thing that I created. So let's go to the homebrew launcher, open this, and let's see if Hello World shows up. Hello World, unspecified author, and it says built with DevKit arm and libsitru. Oh. I learned what DevKit is, I'm not sure what that is, but let's open it and see if it says, Tidal says hi, here goes nothing. Please work, if this works, this is gonna be so cool. Hello World. 
And it says Tito says hi. Oh my gosh, let's go. It worked. With that working, I continued watching the tutorial video and took notes of anything I thought would be important to know when making my app later on. Well, that was it for tutorial videos. Now I was officially on my own. I wasn't too worried though, as the app I wanted to make wasn't super complex. I would live to regret saying this by the way, because when you're programming for the first time, anything, and I mean anything, is super complex. Continue. So I started digging through the examples folder in DevKit Pro, which is full of demo projects. There's one for basic text, one for color text, one for playing audio, and even one for scanning amiibo. I ran a bunch of these on my 3DS while examining their source code, trying to connect what I saw on screen to the code that was making it happen. After about an hour of this, I started focusing on examples that were relevant to my app. That's when I found 2D Shapes, a program inside the graphics GPU folder. This program displays colorful gradient shapes on screen, and when I opened the source code, I kind of understood what some of the lines meant. Take this line for example, C2D underscore color 32. I knew this was creating a color, but had no idea what these numbers meant, so I googled it and found out they represent RGBA values. Red, green, blue, and alpha. Alpha being transparency. So this line creates a pure green color. No red, 0x00, all green, FF, no blue, and fully opaque. So color creation, understood. Now I needed to find out how the shapes were being drawn. The program used C2D underscore draw to place shapes on screen. So I located the one for drawing a rectangle, commented out the rest of the code, and modified this line to draw a red rectangle that filled the entire top screen. I was feeling good about this. Surely this line of code would work. So I went back to msys2, typed make, and dragged the 3ds X file to my 3ds. Oh, it didn't work. I got my first error, and not just any error, a confusing one. Or maybe all errors are confusing, I don't know. Apparently, I was missing six arguments, which made no sense. I specified the size of the rectangle and what color to make it. What more did it want from me? I stared at this error for a while, trying to understand it, but I had no idea what the other six values values needed to be. And at that point, I just shut down my computer and went to bed. Maybe I'd find a solution the next day. But then I came back downstairs because I really wanted that stupid rectangle to work. In the error, I saw Citro 2D, so I looked up what that was. And it turns out that's the library this program was using to draw the shape. So after some searching on the DevKit Pro website, I found the documentation for its drawing functions. And that's when everything started to make a little more sense. I could see how many parameters each function needed and what they actually meant. So to draw a red rectangle that fills the top screen, I needed to use C2D underscore draw rect solid. The first two arguments are the top left position of the red rectangle, so I use 0, 0. The third argument is the depth, but since it's 2D, that's also 0. The next two are the width and height, so I typed 400 and 240 to fill the whole top screen. And U32CLR is the color, in this case red. So with every argument filled in, I went back to msys2, typed make, and no errors this time, woohoo! And now it was time to see if a red rectangle would show up on my 3DS screen. Alright, we have it, and when I press enter, we should hopefully see a red rectangle that takes up the whole entire top screen. I hope this works. Here we go. Enter. Here we go. Yes! Red rectangle, guys. Red rectangle. We're making progress, all right? I put a red rectangle on the screen. Let's go. And there it was, a red rectangle. Getting this done put me closer to completing my goal of creating a homebrew app. So remember when I said I spent an hour looking through example projects? Well, during that time, I found some features I knew I wanted to include in my app. The first one was keyboard functionality. There was a project where pressing A would open the 3DS keyboard and whatever you typed in would show up on screen. I looked through the source code and found out that there are three different types of keyboards you can use. The normal one, Western one, which is English characters only, and the numpad. In my app, I want the D-pad to quickly set colors for red, green, and blue, but also be able to take keyboard input for hex color values. On top of that, I want a simple main menu that shows your selected color and takes a button input to change the screen to that color. And of course, a button to go back to the main menu. So now that I knew exactly what I wanted my app to be, it was time to create it. Oh, 
Okay, stop the time lapse. I was going to show a cool montage to make me look like a 3DS coding wizard, but in this 57 minute raw recording, I typed maybe like five lines of code. Most of the time spent was me sitting down wishing I knew what I was doing. But after two hours of trial, error, and borrowing code from example projects, I finally had something that kind of worked. So I'm in my program right now and what I was finally able to set up is when I press the D-pad it will select different colors. So if I press right on the D-pad the current color is red, if I press left the current color changes to blue, and then if I click down the current color changes to green. And what I also have is something to switch between the colored rectangle that will show up and the home screen. So we're just going to call this the home screen. And what I was able to do is when I press B this will be the colored screen where it shows what the rectangle is. I haven't set that up yet but as you can see all the text disappears appears and then if I click B again it takes us back to this home screen where we can again change whatever color we want and then press B when we're ready. So this was a great start but unfortunately it was also a trap. You see, I was using the 3DS screen like a debug notepad, just printing text to it, which seemed totally fine until I tried to draw a 2D graphic. Turns out the text screen and Citra 2D graphics screen do not get along. The text screen was trying to display text while Citra 2D was trying to display the colored rectangles, leading them to fight to the death. In other words, I could only get one of them to show. After some panicked Googling trying to find a fix to this, I found out that Citra 2D can also display text, which meant I could just use it for everything, which is great. Except that meant I had to restart my entire project. I'm not gonna lie, this was very demotivating. I was this close to scrapping the video and just doing something easy. But my homie ChatGPT helped me keep my sanity. Now I know some of you are probably gonna be like, isn't that cheating? Well, maybe, but I promise I wrote all the code by myself, except for the code I borrowed from example projects, but that's besides the point. I wasn't asking ChatGPT to write the program, I was using it to help me understand what I needed to do. For example, I asked it to explain every command in the Citra 2D library like I was a complete beginner, and doing that helped me so much with understanding how to implement my ideas. And after about two hours of yapping with ChatGPT, reading the Citro 2D API, and viewing example projects, I finally got my code to compile without errors, and it was time to test the updated version. All right, let's open up screen color changer and see if this works. Please work, please work, please work. I spent too long working on it for it to not work. Oh, okay, I see text, I see text, that's good. The bottom screen is not looking too good. I'm not sure why it looks like that, but hopefully that's easy to fix. But if we're ignoring the bottom screen, we have the text appearing that says 3DS color changer, but the important part is if it actually renders the rectangles now. So we have green selected, and if I press B, we should see a green rectangle. B. Yes, yes. Yes, it worked. It worked. Let's go. Let's go. It worked. It actually worked. Let's go. Two days ago, my program was just text on a black screen that said Tidal says hi. And now I had a fully functioning app with a main menu, D-pad inputs, and colored 2D shapes on screen. I was so happy, but I wasn't done yet. It was now time to fix some bugs, finish the keyboard feature, and wait, add some Easter eggs. Yup, that's right. While finishing up my code, I decided to hide four Easter eggs in the app. And if you find all four, you'll win a Nintendo Switch 2 signed by me. Okay, maybe not, but comment down below if you find them. But at last, my program was complete. But before I show it off, I just want to say thank you so much for 200,000 subscribers, and I hope you enjoyed me getting into homebrew development and programming for the first time. But without further ado, I present to you Green Screen Tool. Here it is guys, green screen tool by Teetle. Do you guys like the little icon I put? It's like a very fat green tea. But let's open this app up so I can show you guys what it does. And as you can see, we're greeted by an amazing, beautiful, well-formatted looking home screen. All the text is centered, there's no overlapping text anymore. And we have a great message at the bottom that says press start to exit, and you'll never guess what start does. It exits the app, I know, I know. But now allow me to explain the controls of the app. So in this app, you're able to use the colors red, green and blue by default but then you're also able to type in custom colors but we'll get to that later so on the d-pad if i press left it changes the color to blue if i press down it changes the color to green and if i press right it changes the color to red and once i press b it will load this color so let's see what red looks like and there we go we got a red top screen and a red bottom screen and if i press b it takes me back to the home menu so now we'll try it out with blue which is left on the d-pad and if i press b again we see a blue top screen and a blue bottom screen. Beautiful, beautiful, 10 out of 10, programming genius. So now let's go back to the home menu and press down to load the green screen. 
and there you have it. And you know what? Let's stay in the screen so I can show you the next feature. So you'll notice when I have the screen loaded, I can still use these to change the colors. As you can see, they are changing. But to that one person who's actually going to download this app, what if you want to have a green screen on, but pretend like you're playing a game or something with the D-pad without the colors changing? Well, that's where my next feature comes in. So let's go to the home menu. And if I press X, it enables something called color lock. So as you can see, the top screen now says that color lock is on. And while color lock is on, when I press stuff on the d-pad it no longer changes the colors so now let's press b again b still works even when color lock is on and let's press x to turn off color lock and now for my favorite feature and the one that was the hardest for me to find out how to do custom colors so you'll notice we have controls for left right and down but what about up on the d-pad well if i press up on the d-pad it opens a keyboard as you can see the keyboard says enter hex color value so let's enter a hex color value what color are you guys thinking of uh yellow okay sounds good so yellow would be FFFF00. And if I press submit, come on, focus, there you go. You'll notice that the color changes to custom, which means we have a custom hex code loaded. So now if I press B, we should see a yellow top and bottom screen. And we do. There you go. Yellow at the top, yellow at the bottom. And as for the four Easter eggs, well, I'll give you guys one hint. Try typing in something on the keyboard. So what do you think about my app? Well, after looking at it on camera, I realized that it's completely useless. Like it only works when my 3DS doesn't move in a clip, which rarely happens. But hey, at least I learned some C in the process. I hope you enjoyed me sharing my process of making a 3DS homebrew app. And if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more modding content. Bye.